one of uh, the expectations from the interviewer is that without resorting to vectors, this situation has to be tackled. The roller is rolling perfect on a horizontal surface and a rod which is hinged at O slips on the roller. At uh, this given instant, we need to compute two parameters, the relative velocity between the roller and the rod and the second one, angular velocity of the rod. Now, in order to utilize this particular expression of relative velocity, we need to express the relative velocity in terms of uh, omega dash. And uh, how would we do that? And in the previous discussion, I had very clearly told you that the velocity of the roller, that is at point A, since uh, instantaneous center of rotation is characterized by zero velocity is nothing but omega into 2r into cos beta by 2. Now let's uh, look at uh, one more uh, situation that is from uh, gate 2020. And this situation is based on the concept of uh, relative velocity. And as far as uh, the corresponding research situation is concerned, it is also based on uh, the concept of relative velocity, but uh, it is in a more generalized uh, situation. Therefore, uh, your applicability is tested whether you apply uh, in a textbook kind of a situation that is that of the gate or uh, in a real time situation that uh, is uh, that of uh, a research interview. Now, this uh, gate situation that is from 2020 is as follows. A roller is rolling between two plates without uh, slipping and uh, the velocities of uh, the plates are indicated uh, as shown in the figure. And uh, we need to estimate the angular velocity in terms of uh, the velocities of the plate. This uh, is a very, very straightforward uh, situation. In fact, uh, one of uh, the design intents of our course is to help you solve uh, the question in the minimum possible uh, time. And therefore, uh, if you go through our course, uh, a very, very short and quick method is suggested. That is, the difference between velocities of top and bottom point is 2 omega r, and that must be equal to the velocity difference of the two plates which are directed opposite to each other. So straight away you would get uh, this particular uh, answer. But however, in order to give you conceptual clarity and what exactly is going on, please consider uh, two of these uh, methods. This method which uh, in fact computes relative velocity both at uh, bottom and top of uh, the contact point of roller with the plate is not going to be explained because uh, this method is followed by many solution providers. Now let's look at a totally different method which is quicker and uh, smarter. Now in case of regular rolling, we had uh, the point of contact with the ground characterized by zero velocity and which we also called uh, instantaneous center of rotation. Now here, since uh, the velocities of both the plates are perpendicular to this vertical diameter. The instantaneous center of rotation has to lie on this and uh, it would be in such a ratio that is uh, the instantaneous center is going to divide this diameter in such a ratio that it would be in the ratio 2 is to 1. Now instantaneous center of rotation is characterized by zero velocity and it is always lies on a line perpendicular to the velocities. One velocity is in this direction, another velocity is in this direction, and uh, it lies on a line which is perpendicular to both to these velocities. And since it is characterized by zero velocity, and uh, this distance is one and this distance is two, the distance of instantaneous center of rotation to the top point or uh, the top plate is uh, 2r by 3 because the entire distance is 2r and uh, by 3 gives you the distance from instantaneous center of rotation to the top plate which is 2r by 3 multiplied by omega will give you v. Similarly, if you want to compute the velocity of the bottom plate, 
you just double it. Now, by now it is obvious that 2v must be double of this. So you will get the velocity of the bottom plate. And if you want to compute the velocity of center of mass, again, omega into the distance. That is, if you subtract uh, 2r by 3 from r, you will get the distance uh, of instantaneous center of rotation to the center of mass. And uh, the center of mass velocity also can be computed. Now, what is very, very important here is that in case of a normal rolling, if uh, the roller is rotating in the clockwise sense, then the roller is advancing to the right. And if it is, uh, it were rotating in the anti-clockwise sense, the roller would have uh, rolled to the left. But here, the direction of uh, rotation is anti-clockwise, but uh, the roller is actually rolling in the towards the right. So that is one small observation. But of course, uh, in uh, course, uh, we advocate uh, one more method, that is third method of uh, dealing with uh, this uh, particular problem. Now let's move on and see how the same uh, concept is more generalized in a research interview situation. Let's continue. Now here goes uh, typical research situation. Of course, uh, this question is also based on the concept of relative velocity as it was a uh, gate 2020 situation. Now, one of uh, the expectations from the interviewer is that without resorting to vectors, this situation has to be tackled. The concept of relative velocity does not change, but it only gets uh, complicated with some uh, trigonometric identities thanks to generalizing it. Now, let's try and uh, crack this uh, particular situation again based on the concept of relative velocity. The definition of uh, the problem goes as follows. The roller is rolling perfect on a horizontal surface and a rod which is hinged at O slips on the roller. At uh, this given instant where uh, the roller makes an angle alpha with respect to the horizontal, we need to compute two parameters. One is the relative velocity between the roller and the rod and the second one being angular velocity of the rod. Now let's uh, try and do this without resorting to vectors. Now it's a matter of basic observation that relative velocity must be along the tangent at point A as uh, depicted in the figure. Now in order to compute the relative velocity we would exploit the fact that rod is hinged and there is no velocity along the length of the rod. In order to do that, we first need to compute the total velocity at point A because of uh, the rolling of uh, the disk. Now, the instantaneous center of the disk is characterized by zero velocity. And uh, if you looked at the geometry, then the distance of the point A in question is at a distance. 2r cos beta by 2 that is also written in the figure very clearly and therefore since instantaneous center of rotation is characterized by zero velocity the velocity of uh, point a because of the rolling is given by v naught which is uh, 2 omega r cos beta by 2 you can also write it as omega into distance which is omega into 2r cos beta by now, having uh, found this particular expression, now try and establish an expression for uh, relative velocity. And since I said the relative velocity is tangential to the radius at point A, then what happens is its inclination becomes uh, from the figure 90 minus alpha plus beta. You can see that alpha is the inclination of uh, the rod with respect to horizontal and beta is the inclination of the radius with respect to horizontal. And from the triangle, you can see that the inclination of relative velocity, rather inclination of the tangent at point A with respect to rod is given by 90 minus inclination of the rod plus inclination of the radius at that particular point. Now, this velocity component must be nullified by a component of velocity at A due to rolling. 
since we have already computed uh, the component of velocity that is v naught at a due to rolling which is 2 r omega cos beta by 2 we would take uh, a component of uh, this particular velocity along the rod be mindful of the fact that uh, this particular velocity makes an angle beta by 2 with respect to tangent which is uh, well depicted in the figure and similarly since alpha makes an angle uh, rod makes an angle alpha with respect to the horizontal as shown in the figure the difference of the inclinations with from the horizontal that is if you take horizontal as the reference then the difference of uh, the angles is given by beta by 2 minus alpha so essentially what i have done is I have taken component of the relative velocity along the rod as shown and also I have taken component of velocity at A due to rolling along the rod because uh, the rod and the relative velocity make this angle with respect to each other and uh, once I take the difference and equate it to zero I get an expression for relative velocity. Now, in the subsequent discussion, we would use the expression for relative velocity to find the angular velocity of the rod. So let's proceed. Now, we would uh, try and establish an expression for uh, omega dash, that is the angular velocity of the rod. And since we have uh, an expression for uh, relative velocity, which we derived uh, in the preceding discussion, we would make use of this to derive omega dash. Now, in order to utilize this particular expression of relative velocity, we need to express the relative velocity in terms of uh, omega dash. And uh, how would we do that? If you looked at the figure, it is clear that uh, the velocity of the roller along the tangent is in an upward direction because uh, the roller is rolling in an anti-clockwise direction. But the contribution of the rod, which is uh, in the downward direction must be added to the contribution of uh, the roller's velocity so that uh, relative velocity is constructed. The principle of construction of relative velocity remains the same. If the velocities are directed in opposite uh, directions, then they get added and if they are in the same direction, they get subtracted. But mathematics makes it a little complicated here. Now we'll first look at the contribution of uh, the roller. Now we are seeking the component of velocity of the roller along the tangent along which the relative velocity exists. Since the roller's velocity from the figure you can clearly see makes an angle beta by 2 with respect to the tangent. And in the previous discussion I had very clearly told you that the velocity of the roller that is at point A since uh, instantaneous center of rotation is characterized by zero velocity is nothing but omega into 2r into cos beta by 2. Now since that velocity makes an angle beta by 2 with respect to the tangent, the contribution of that velocity to the relative velocity is this. Velocity multiplied by cosine of the angle it makes with the tangent. Now let's look at the contribution of the rod. Rod is rotating at an angle angular velocity omega dash and therefore when I multiply that by the rod length we get velocity perpendicular to the rod and since perpendicular to the rod makes an angle uh, alpha plus beta with respect to the tangent or the direction of the uh, relative velocity which is shown then its contribution to the relative velocity is uh, omega dash L into cosine of the angle between uh, the uh, perpendicular velocity of the rod and uh, the tangent which is of course the direction of relative velocity so therefore we get omega dash L multiplied by cosine of the angle between those two that is uh, the perpendicular velocity and the tangent or the direction of relative velocity. So this is the contribution of the rod and this is the contribution of velocity of the roller. And when I add this up, because they are directed opposite to each other, you can clearly see that in the figure, I get uh, the relative velocity. However, we already have an expression for relative velocity in terms of uh, the angles and the angular velocity of the roller, which is known. And of course, the radius of the roller is also known. 
by equating this expression with this, you can easily get an expression for omega dash. Let me emphasize again that if you were to resort to vectors, the calculations could have been much more tedious, but uh, since you understood uh, the concept of relative velocity and implemented that in the simplest possible uh, way, uh, this result uh, could be arrived quickly. We exploited uh, two facts. One is uh, the definition of relative velocity. And the second thing is a rod is constrained. So therefore, along the rod, there can be no velocity. So exploiting these two facts by writing uh, some basic expression in terms of uh, the angles, because the geometry is also pretty simple if you looked at uh, the figures. So therefore, uh, the velocity, the relative velocity expression could be established from which uh, we could uh, deduct the expression for omega dash. So let's cut. In the preceding discussions on mechanics, we did learn uh, quite a few things, be it the concept of rolling, be it the concept of uh, relative velocity, be it the concept of uh, instantaneous center of rotation, and then reckoning uh, velocity at any point from the instantaneous center of rotation. All these things obviously happen to be your inorganic takeaways. As far as uh, the organic takeaway is concerned, very, very categorically we understood that uh, in most of uh, the real-time situations and product situations, thanks to generalization, the mathematical requirement uh, goes up. And that is where your BTEC situations uh, demand uh, little mathematics, a little mathematics rather. Your uh, MTEC situations uh, or MS situations uh, require more mathematics. And your PhD or research requires uh, maximum mathematical ideas. So therefore, uh, it is all about tackling uh, generalized situations rather than textbook situations as we did in GATE. So that is what is uh, all about the skill requirement for research. So let's continue.